I was afraid that uh, Troy was going to give away some of my news from later, but <laughs> he danced around it. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm excited. We have, uh, we have another uh, headline sponsor who is uh, who's a new headline sponsor that um, we haven't had before at our summits, um, and that is, uh, that's Dell. So joining us today from Dell, we have VP and CTO from the Enterprise Solutions Group, Sam Greenblatt. Good morning. It's great to be at OpenStack Summit. And what's interesting is I relived the days when it was maybe 500 people in the room. So it's fascinating. I love Troy's speech, and I'm going to play off of it a little bit. I'm going to explain one thing, and I want you to imagine this first. Uh, Steve Jobs, who was a old friend, he used to tell a story I loved. When he was a kid, a gentleman down the street was an engineer at Hewlett Packard. And what he did was he made Steve pick out two rocks. And he took the two rocks and he had a canned tumbler, if you can imagine that. And he put the two rocks in with buckshot. And it ran all night. And when Steve came back the next morning, he found two beautiful rocks, totally polished. Having controversy, like Troy talked about, and having discussions that move towards progress is why people join OpenStack. And it's also why you're going to see us work with partners like Red Hat. I have Tim Eaton with me who's someone I've known in the industry, and he's a great partner. Let me just start out by talking about where we see cloud going, and we're going to add another piece up there. It's called Mobile Backend as a Service. This was coined the other by IBM. The other three were coined by NIST. And what we believe is we need to create that center, and OpenStack is how we're doing it. We need a on-demand, self-service, elastic, and measured service. We want to go from private to public. Other companies have said, hey, we'll take a non public version, and then add some proprietary software to it and call it enterprise ready. We believe the adoption of OpenStack that Red Hat is doing, keeping it purely open, and you're going to hear from Tim some exciting announcements today, are absolutely to our vision. And we are very concerned when companies want to take OpenStack in a different direction. Our cloud strategy is uh, simple. We believe that we take a comprehensive approach by supplying cloud builders a facility to do an either a private cloud on-premise, a community cloud, and we believe that we can do this through taking OpenStack, putting a PaaS layer on it, whether it's Solemn or OpenShift. And we also see the wave of containers coming. And between all those three aspects, we believe that we're going to deliver a multi-cloud management environment from our software group that will be second to none. Plus, we have consulting and application services. Let's talk about why we believe in OpenStack and why we want to be here today. It's a foundation to a new order. In 1962, a gentleman by the name of Thomas Kuhn wrote a book. And in there, he coined the term paradigm shift. 
And all the analysts in the industry use paradigm shift all the time. Excuse me for a second. And one of the things that we believe in paradigm shifts is defining it properly. Going from Pepsi to Coke, since we're in Atlanta, is a shift. Going from water to bottled water is a paradigm shift. If you think about that, that's what OpenStack is. You would be hard pressed to find many companies working in the community, and we're proud that we have some key members in the community. And by the way, we argue internally about some of the projects. But in the end, what we try to do is we try to come to a common conclusion. And that's what the community is back about. That's why the rock's in the can. Now, do these perceptions sound very familiar? OpenStack is now unstoppable. It's a force in the IT community. It is a paradigm shift. And the rate that OpenStack is putting enhancements out there is incredibly impressive. So impressive that the community is growing rust, uh, robust and larger every day. Having want, witnessed Linux grow from 2% to 28% of the market, we see that community works. We watch Apache work. Apache runs most of the web. We believe that OpenStack will be the infrastructure as a service that everybody will rely on. We're seeing an uptick of adoption of OpenStack in the mainstream. I deal with enterprises all the time that are saying to me, how do I get an enterprise grade OpenStack? That's one of the reasons why we did the Red Hat partnership. We are looking at companies like you saw this morning, Wells Fargo and Disney, adopting OpenStack. I could give you a lot more names that are on the list. That is far more many names than we had five years ago. And the visibility is good. It's making a lot of people realize that OpenStack and open source is good for their business, and we believe in enterprise adoption of it. So what our whole thing is, you see the two bridges there. We want to affirm that we will stay working in the community, having it over the first bridge, and we are going to bridge back in multiple ways. We are going to create upstream code with Red Hat for multiple OpenStack projects. And we will do it both as Dell and with Red Hat. And before I bring Tim up, uh, I also want to talk about a couple of other small things. We will continue to support, con continue to contribute, and what's more important is we want to create the richest infrastructure because being a company, other companies out there, it is very hard to innovate at the speed that the open source community uh, innovates at. We want to enrich it. What we want to do is create a bridge between the community and the distribution that Tim will talk about in a moment. And we want that bridge to go both ways. And we want to make sure that we learn from the community and the community learns from us. And by being one with the community, we will bring a much stronger product to market. We believe totally that supporting this effort is critical, and I'm going to talk about some of it in a minute. But Tim and his talk is going to have some very exciting announcements, and then I'm going to come back and talk about how we support the community. 
So my good friend Tim, he ate it. Uh, unfortunately, he's the only one older than me in the room now. <laughs> we started in Linux a long time ago. Tim? Thanks, Sam. And I'd like to thank... Uh, <laughs> yes. And I'd like to thank uh, Sam Yu and Dell for uh, first inviting uh, us here today to join you, and also for the great partnership that we've built together. You know, the Dell relationship in Linux and open source goes back now almost 15 years. And today, that partnership has really been solidified by the shared vision that both companies have in terms of building a, a hybrid cloud architecture spanning inside and outside the firewall, all built on open source and open source components. Um, as you'll see on the slide here, uh, everything in red are the things that we and Dell are jointly collaborating on as part of the OpenStack platform. Uh, as you may know, Red Hat has historically for the last several releases been the number one contributor, but Dell is incredibly active as well as you can see here. Almost every dimension of the OpenStack platform we're jointly working on and contributing to. So I mentioned this shared vision that we both have about open cloud and open hybrid cloud where we can serve enterprises inside the firewall and outside based on OpenStack. What do we mean by a hybrid cloud? What we're really talking about is the ability to deploy any kind of workload on the deployment platform that makes the most sense for it. So traditional scale-up applications deploy on virtualization. That's part of how customers want to deploy. Elastic workloads that can be scaled out either in a private cloud or further out into a compatible public cloud, again, using the same OpenStack infrastructure. That's all part of this common vision. And we're providing engineered solutions from Linux, from RHEL in our case, on up to ensure that those become enterprise supportable, meet needs in compliance and security, so on and so forth. There's a couple of things that, make, that, that uh, extend this from a hybrid perspective. Number one, as you see depicted on the slide here, the notion of a common application model, in this case evolving to containers. So having a consistent way to host containerized applications from everything from bare metal Linux all the way to and including public cloud deployments and PaaS deployments in our case on OpenShift. Secondly is a common management platform. Uh, we've uh, recently acquired Ink Tank for Ceph, and that, coupled with our Gluster acquisition previously, gives us a common storage fabric that can look across uh, the firewall to your deployments inside and outside. And then the third element, again, that spans this hybrid model is our CloudForm system management product. And this, again, gives you a single interface for cloud management across all of these deployment patterns. And again, this is an engineered solution, so customers can deploy confidently and mix and match in whatever way makes the most sense for them. Uh, one thing that drives both Dell and us is this commitment to the open innovation model. Uh, you certainly know of Fedora from Linux, but every project that we participate in, you know, we have a community, uh, corresponding community project where all the innovation happens. And we and Dell, as Sam said, are collaborating in the upstream, creating new uh, technologies that we then productize to make mission critical, critical enterprise deployable. And all the innovations that we make, all the fixes that we make, we then push back through the community process, creating this virtuous cycle of open innovation. And as you know, you just look around the room, the pace of innovation has accelerated since open collaborative communities around open source technologies has really broadened its footprint. You see it here in every dimension. And we're committed uh, to do an open source community around everything that we productize. And let me just point out three uh, uh, new things here for those you may not be aware. First and foremost, as I mentioned, uh, the Ceph community under Red Hat Storage, that's the product of our Ink Tank acquisition uh, made just a little bit ago. Uh, that broadens our ability to deliver on enterprise-grade uh, uh, virtualized storage across all storage models. Second, although it's not on the slide here, uh, we recently announced a partnership with CentOS to create a sandbox environment uh, uh, combining CentOS and RDO for a community edition of our RHEL OpenStack platform that gives you a consistent environment from the operating system on up to do prototyping and, and evaluations and such. And then the third one, an announcement that we're making today, uh, we acquired CloudForms. CloudForms is our, our uh, uh, hybrid management platform, cloud management platform. Uh, today that we're announcing, we're uh, formally open sourcing that and creating the manageiq.org community uh, to enable uh, collaboration at the management layer. 
You know, one of the interesting dynamics is, and, and you know, I've been in the open source side of the industry since long before it was called open source, and we always run through these cycles around what should be open source and not. And it's not about the code, it's uh, exclusively. It's certainly about that because that creates a community of developers that can engage, but it's also transparency of the process so customers can understand where we're going, particularly in a context like OpenStack, where it's moving fast and you're making choices every day around what to deploy and how. All those elements, the embracing heterogeneity, that applies, we believe, at every level of the stack. Yet, we haven't seen much in the way of a full cloud management platform that's gone down the open source path. That's really what we're intending to do today with our, our uh, uh, manageiq.org announcement. And you can see, uh, it's as depicted on the slide, it's a flu full cloud management platform that also embraces heterogeneity. It doesn't just manage OpenStack, it can manage virtualization KVM environments, it can manage VMware environments, uh, Amazon Web Services, and even Microsoft. So it truly embraces heterogeneity to give you the flexibility and choice that you're looking for. And then the last thing that we in Dell uh, believe strongly in, and it's been alluded to a couple times this morning, is that ecosystem really does matter. You know, we, we recognize that uh, hybrid cloud architectures are going to be built, not bought, and that means we have to embrace a community of development that spans from independent software vendors, hardware vendors, solution providers, service providers. And it's part of our DNA and Dell's DNA to go work hard to jointly build that ecosystem. So with that, let me just uh, wrap up my, my few comments uh, by saying that you know, Dell and we are committed to collaborating in the upstream, driving innovation across all those dimensions. We then work together to create real products. And you know, together, we're working hard to make OpenStack real for your cloud deployments. So Sam, thanks so much. Thank you very much, Tim. <laughs> One of the things that I also want to tie back to Troy is you heard him talk about Def Core, and I'm proud of Rob Hirschfeld, who's from Dell, who's working with Josh and Troy on that effort. So uh, I want to thank him very much for his efforts. Let's talk about the Dell IT mandate. Dell has an incubation uh, lab in its IT department. It's to look at the next generation uh, of data centers. When we build it, we build it with a central IT innovation concept, and we literally stood, stood up OpenStack in our IT department. We are in very short order building upon it and some of our new web services are coming out in an OpenStack environment. That is commitment to using it and understanding it and also working with corporate and being able to show other enterprise users what we're doing, it, doing with it. We built this in conjunction with our security practice, Dell Security. So we're pretty excited, and I want to also say that when you take a look at this, you got to say that in order to be committed, you got to be able to com be committed in your own company to work on the projects and also use it internally. Dell sees real business impact from OpenStack. The incubation of our IT projects within our incubator is faster. We're addressing the core, imper uh, core imperative that we gave to the group. It's now enhancing the user experience. And we're also creating labs for other parts of Dell to be able to use it and they love it because we put a self-service portal in. Where's OpenStack headed and where is Dell headed? I don't have enough time in 25 minutes to tell you all the projects we're going to work on. But I will tell you that we're more excited about it than we've ever been. We want the next era to be called the OpenStack era. We also, at the same time, have worked with Microsoft 
on putting Hyper-V up on top of OpenStack. You're going to ask me why. There are enterprises that are absolutely committed to Microsoft. As you know, uh, Red Hat worked with ESX, VMware, to put it on top of OpenStack. We're looking at OpenStack as part of the Linux infrastructure so you could build out infrastructure as a service. The new cloud paradigm, which we talked about, which is IaaS, PaaS, SaaS, and BaaS. I love these acronyms. I can go on forever. And uh, what we're looking at is now containers. And what you will see is the key to success are the people in this room. The key to success are the people in, the, in Round Rock, Texas, and around the world that work for Dell that have embraced this to bring value to the customer. You know, one of the things that I always get asked is once you get up, in a, uh, up an OpenStack platform, what do I do next? And you saw us in, um, embrace PaaS through OpenShift. We have worked with Cloud Foundry also, but uh, what we are looking at is customer choice. And we believe one is advancing a lot further and faster, so we're, we're backing that. We're, it's a, a truly exciting time at Dell. It is exciting because we're not trying to do it as a single company. By embracing another company that works with us, and by the way, it's not just uh, Red Hat. We're working with Intel on this and we're working with some other uh, data companies, big data companies that will be named later. The important thing is the communities are interacting. Uh, I'll give you one example of a community that I just spoke to last week. Those of you who know Spark, which is another data-intensive application, which came out of uh, the UC system. We're looking at that, not just Hadoop. And we're, we're looking at it with our partner, Red Hat. We're looking at it with our partner, Intel. And we're looking at it with their partnership with Cloudera, which we're also partnered with. So overall, what you're seeing is we recognize community is more than one. And we are absolutely there. And we have to extend the reach and range of OpenStack. And what is supposed to happen in, op in open source, according to the famous book, The uh, Cathedral and the Bazaar, is the bazaar created a new form of commerce. And we basically believe that you are going to create the next generation of IT. And the innovation is yet to come. And we believe, just as Troy said, we're in inning two. It's a long game. And when we get to the end, and I don't think there will be an end, people look back at it and say, it is a paradigm shift. And it's a paradigm shift to where the community and the enterprise become one because they're running and working in the same uh, method. And that is something we're very excited about. So in essence, I want to close on this note. We will grow the OpenStack community. And I say we. That's the community giving back. As you know, Red Hat takes the community edition and basically creates an enterprise edition. And anything we do with Red Hat will go back to the community. Yes, we have proprietary software, but that is not going in our distribution. It will never go in our distribution. And anytime you put proprietary software in a distribution, it's called a fork. And we're not in for forking anything. We're basically in to working with you, helping us 
create a better open stack. Thank you. Today, when we have conversations with any vendor or any partner, we make sure that uh, their product supports OpenStack. Because if it doesn't, it doesn't fit our strategy. If there's an external provider that we want to work with, as long as they're running OpenStack, we know that we can use them. Even if they weren't initially uh, part of the movement, they all have seemed to come into the movement. We're always expecting, when we talk to a new vendor or an existing vendor, we're expecting them to participate equally in OpenStack and then contribute their interfaces and make their uh, software uh, work within the pluggable architecture of OpenStack. It helps solidify maybe the partner approach where it's not just a vendor and a customer, but when both, both parties are involved in making the same thing better, um, I think it opens it up to some, some stronger relationships and some better conversations. One of the primary reasons we did that, made that move, was so that we could leverage all of the tools and capabilities of all of the third-party software, open source software, that operates in that ecosystem. And I can use all those tools for my internal deployments. I can leverage all this stuff. I don't have to build it myself. I don't have to go to a, a specific vendor. That, you know, cloud is, is bigger than any one given vendor. Um, therefore, it takes a platform that's open, uh, like OpenStack, um, to be bigger than that, because it, it, needs to, it needs to reach across. In the past, when an interface had been written with a specific vendor or a specific vendor's code was so integrated into our systems, it was hard to change to others. But given the pluggable architecture of OpenStack, we are now able to bring in more vendors.